today, so just please bear with me for a moment. Um, anybody remember what's happening next Sunday in church? Children's program at 9. Oh, I got it, Morgan. I see that. I'm sorry. Thank you for raising your hand. I jumped the gun there. So you did a great job, though. Thank you. So we will be having one service next Sunday as we celebrate our kids and their wonderful hard work that they've been doing to put together a Christmas program this year about a very special child. Now, um, we don't know who the very special child is, so it's a mystery. It'll be a mystery. Right? It probably doesn't even start with Jake. So we invite you to be here next Sunday for the service at 9.30. Now you may have noticed that there's some wonderful festive goods out in the narthex. Those are courtesy of our quilters and a uh, handful of other folks from um, outside the quilting circle who shared some of their creative joy with us this season. If you are like me, you're looking for some stocking stuffers or just some nice, useful gifts for loved ones. There's some wonderful stuff out there. And there's also the quilt raffle. So there's two gorgeous Christmas-themed quilts that are hanging. Uh, for every ticket you buy, you get to decide which raffle you want it to go in. And then next Sunday after worship, we will, per uh, we will draw the names for each quilt. Um, and then it will be that person's uh, to do as they please. I know some folks like to use them as gifts. Other people are very happy to keep them in their own homes and wrap them around themselves. Um, however you use it, may it be a blessing to you. All the money that's raised continues to support our wonderful quilting ministry that does so many awesome things um, here at our congregation and to share God's love with the larger world. And so we, we love being able to support them in whatever way possible. Um, I lost my train of thought. Oh, pledge cards. So I know many of you have uh, submitted your 2024 commitment cards for um, what you and your families have discerned are within your capabilities. Um, if you haven't done that and you're like, oh, I give regularly anyways, or I give, this is how I do it, and like I don't, it's not going to change. It still helps us to know so that we can plan as faithfully and responsibly as possible. And if you remember, our goal this year is 70 pledge cards. The, the uh, pledge thermometer has steadily been rising, so it's been fun to watch it. Anita very uh, diligently adds a line every time we get a new one to watch that thermometer rise. Um, and our goal is 70. So even if you are like, I'm giving what I gave last year, I don't need to do that. It'd be great if you did, because then we can have the gratification of watching that line rise up, 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 and up. Um, so if you can help us do that, we'd really appreciate that. And then last but not least, if you still need a Christmas tree or a nice fresh wreath, the Christmas tree sales are continuing. Um, because Thanksgiving was early this year, they're, uh, they're thinking people might be waiting a little bit longer to get their trees this year. Um, so we hope that you will check out the, the tree lot and uh, make all that volunteer time for this. Alrighty, dear friends, with that, I invite you to turn your hearts and minds to worship and to please rise as you are able for our call to worship. Family of faith, one of the greatest joys of worship is that it is not a solo act. We gather together. We find joy and God in the act of connection. So as we begin our worship, I invite you to turn and to face someone that you are close to so that you can see each other. That was an instruction. That is an instruction, please turn. <laughs> and now repeat the words after me. You don't need to look at the board or you. We welcome, welcome to worship. Welcome I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. Surely God is in this space. Surely God is in this space. I see God in your face. I see God in your face. Let us worship together. Let us worship together. Family, family of faith, one of the ways we find joy in a weary world is through connection. The prayer of confession is a place of connection with God. In the prayer of confession, we get to come before God with our full, messy, honest selves. And in the midst of that mess, God tells us that we are loved, claimed, and forgiven. 
There is no greater joy than that. Let us pray together. God of laughter, God of open doors and family reunions, we confess that we often doubt good news. We move through the world, waiting for the other shoes to drop, waiting for life to fall apart, waiting for our humanity to get the best of us. Instead of leaning into joy, we lean into scarcity. We lean into fear. We lean into isolation. Forgive us for forgetting that joy is amplified when shared. Heal the wounds we have from the experts and teach us how to grow open our doors when we visit. Show us how to find joy in connection. Amen. Family of faith, I imagine that when we come before God with the truth of our lives, God meets us like Mary in our scripture today. The door is thrown open, there is laughter, there is joy, there is embracing, and it is holy. So trust this, believe this. You are claimed, you are loved, you are forgiven, and you are set to serve. Find joy in that. Amen. Amen.
and forgiving 70 times 7. By choosing grace over hate and opening the door for each other. There are a million ways to practice peace. So today, we like the candle of peace as a reminder and as a charge. A baby. 
the coming of Jesus. That is right. So, when you sing this song, sometimes, right, you don't really pay attention to the words, right? You're just kind of singing, you hear the melody, right? It all sounds great. But when you actually just sit and just read the words, it's actually pretty amazing. I just want to read a couple little parts of it to you here. Angel Gabriel, heaven came, his wings stripped as snow, the fire as flame. Now let's pretend we're married, right? I mean, can you imagine that? You're like sitting there and having some tea or whatever they drank back then. Drink tea? Alright, okay. Got, got one right there. And then all of a sudden, this big angel just comes down, right? Eyes of flame, wings as gripped as snow. And what does he tell her? He says, You're going to have a baby. It's going to be the Son of God. Congratulations! <laughs> right? She wasn't even married. Pretty young, also. Now, can someone just come to you? Can someone open up your front door and just tell you something incredible like that? Are you going to believe them? <laughs> Maybe, right? Because that's pretty awe-inspiring, right? Like, oh my gosh, this, this is pretty. This this whole deal looks real. And that's exactly what she does here. I just want to read one a little bit. And the gentle Mary meekly bowed her head. To me, as it pleases God, she said. So she was ready, right? She said, "You are my God. You are a messenger from God. You have told me to do something." I am going to do it. I believe that it be so. Pretty amazing, huh? So, what I want you to remember from this, right, is that for you, like Mary, if you're listening for God in your heart, maybe it's something you see, maybe it's something you hear, right? to take that, to spread the good news, right? This is the beginning of the good news. And to be those son and daughter of Christ that I know you guys to be. Are we ready to pray? Yes. Yeah. Alright. Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. Today we hear the story. Today we hear the story. Of the angel Gabriel and your mother, Mary. Of the angel Gabriel your birth was revealed. Your birth was revealed. And your name was given. And your name was given. We rejoice in your coming. We rejoice in your coming. And we will sing your song. And we will sing your song. Amen. Amen. And if you guys are here for communion, there's going to be another song about Mary. So please listen to that. All right, go down to Sunday school. shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out. And I say, What shall I cry? 
All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise as we prepare our hearts. Amen. to me. 
For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Beloved of God, grace and peace to you in the name of the one for whom you do. Amen. There are those times in our lives where things seem like maybe the end of the world, where it feels like the rug has been pulled out from underneath us. And often, they're not great situations. But sometimes, when we look back on them, we can look back and see where God was at work in those not-so-good times. For me, I remember that in my last ministry setting, before I came to be your pastor, I was a chaplain in a long-term care community. The company who owned my community decided to sell our building in we had been a nonprofit, and the new owners were for profit and wanted to maximize that profit. Now, the thing to know is that chaplain's work is not reimbursed by Medicare, so my position was cut, and I lost my job on December 31st, 2019. Now, if you remember, there was this little thing that happened in 2020, and a lot of it centered around health care. And so as devastating as that was, as life-altering as that was, in the end, it was a strange blessing of sorts to be able to be safe during a time when so many were not. And I know many of you have had these times in your lives, right, where, like I said, it feels like the rug has been pulled out from underneath you. It's almost like you can't breathe in that experience. And it's only in hindsight that we can see just how clearly God was in the midst of it. And this is how I imagine that Mary felt when an angel from God shows up at her house to tell her, that she would bear God's own beloved son. It's kind of a big deal. And I think often, understandably, we tend to move to gloss over the many reasons why Gabriel's message would not have been welcome, and in fact would have been unwelcome news to Mary. Right? We, we move to her, her rejoicing, and we move to her consent. But we forget sometimes that she was a peasant girl living under the brutal imperial power of Rome. And while she had been promised to Joseph, she was not yet married to him. So she would be considered unwed and pregnant. Yes, she's God's favored one, and historically we look only at the blessing and the gift that that is because it is a gift and a blessing. But Mary would have faced danger when this all first came to pass. At the very least, her, in the best case scenario, her fiancé would leave her and she would face the scrutiny and scorn of her community. And at the worst, her life could be at danger because she lived in a time and a place where not only was it just okay, but it was considered appropriate to stone her for her unwed and pregnant state. There's a lot we don't know about Mary, but there's a lot of gaps in between the information that we do know. And scripture tells us that she does move from this state of fear and perplexity. Hey, you know, Gabriel even tells her, like, don't worry, it's okay, don't be afraid, we got this. And she moves into a state of rejoicing, into singing Mary's song and the Magnificat, which we won't be getting this season, but is the next section of scripture. And given what we do know, what we do know about the time and the place and what would have she would have faced, her rejoicing in itself is remarkable. However, like 
Zechariah, Mary, has some questions. Now, unlike Zechariah, she isn't looking for a sign that it's true, but more of like the logistical clarification of things. Right? Like she understands how babies work and how they come into the world. She's like, that's not possible given my unwed state. How, how, are, how is this going to happen? But the implication being like, how do I stay true and faithful and follow the rules and expectations and let God's word be fulfilled? And Gabriel goes on to explain what God has planned and invites us into this remarkable, kind of unbelievable encounter, right? And what begins is having the rug pulled out from underneath of her transforms into something that is just as life-altering. And Mary has the opportunity to bring God into the world. Her child will come from God, be the son of the God most high. He is the one who was promised by God long ago. And he will reign over God's people forever. And so Mary, Mary says, yes, let it be as you have said. And it's important. Her consent is essential to this. And we only get there, though, when we first go through her confusion and her fear. Because it is out of that that her understanding grows and she can say no what she's saying yes to. But the yes is only a beginning of the good news that God has for us. And we follow Mary as she leaves home to visit her relative Elizabeth. I love that Gabriel makes sure to tell Mary this news. Because as we found out in verse 24, Elizabeth has been isolating. She's been living in seclusion. We have no idea if anybody in Elizabeth's family even knew she was pregnant. So there's a very good chance that Mary had no idea that this family member was also pregnant at this time. But now she knows because Gabriel wants to reassure her that she's not alone in this wildly unexpected uh, situation. Now, tradition tells us that Mary and Elizabeth lived some distance apart, perhaps several days worth of walking. So it's a big deal that Mary just leaves right away and walks there while she's pregnant. For those of you who have experienced that first trimester, that is no easy feat. <coughs> And given all that we know about the context of the time and the place and Mary's age, I mean, some sources have her as young as 13 or 14. I mean, she is young. And we know what happens to young, unwed mothers. So we might expect, if we didn't know, if we didn't know what happens next, we might expect that Elizabeth would be scandalized and very upset to have her unwed, pregnant teenage relative show up unannounced and uninvited. Right? Given those harsh realities of the ancient world, realities that many kids still face today, Elizabeth should have spoken harshly to Mary, should have shamed her, should have put her in her place to make sure she understood just how bad her situation was. But instead, we are met with the leaping of an unborn child who leaps for joy in Elizabeth's womb. And Elizabeth speaks warm words of welcome, of even respect. She who is so much older and Mary with a longed for child speaks words of respect to her young, unwed, pregnant relative. And she says, why has this happened to me that the mother of my Lord comes to me? Elizabeth puts Mary in her place, all right. Elizabeth demonstrates for us the joy in connecting with one another. The joy in celebrating the way God is at work in us and through us. And the joy of welcoming someone the rest of the world should tell us to shine 
Elizabeth would have been well within her rights to tell Mary to go away. And yet, she lets the joy grow by welcoming her in. And what's so beautiful about this is if we think about everything that's going on at this point, that Elizabeth is in her sixth month of pregnancy. She's entered that third trimester. Mary's in the first trimester. And she's pregnant with the Son of God. And Mary bears the word of God to her beloved family member, Elizabeth. God goes to us. God meets us where we are. And in this space, Elizabeth had been isolating herself. She, in, in the midst of this remarkable news, which we don't really know exactly what she knows, because Zechariah, if you remember from last week, he can't talk. So we don't know what he's been able to convey to her. Like, I don't know if you pulled out like a stone tablet and started chiseling away at what's going on in there, right? But we don't know. All we know is that Elizabeth, while rejoicing, has isolated herself. And Mary, the bearer of God's word into the world, goes to meet Elizabeth where she is in that isolation. And rather than diluting, like D-I-L-U-T-I-N-G, diluting their joy, it is in their connection that the joy grows, that the rejoicing expands. And they are able to carry that joy with each other and for each other. Because that's what our community can do when we are at risk of isolating ourselves, when things become just too complicated, too much to bear, nobody can understand it, nobody can deal with it. Our community can draw us out and can rejoice with us, can comfort us, can be present with us. And just as importantly, we carry one another when we cannot rejoice ourselves, when we cannot let there be joy because the weight of the world is too much for us. Our community carries us and shows us how to be joyful when the time comes again. As Ecclesiastes reminds us, for everything there is a season, a time for rejoicing and a time for weeping. Now often the focus of Mary going to Elizabeth is that Elizabeth provides the sanctuary for Mary, right? We've established the case that Mary would not have been in a very safe, potentially been in a safe environment. And she leaves that potentially life-threatening risk of remaining in her own town and goes to her relative Mary, but or Elizabeth. What I really like is what one commentary asks us to consider instead. What if Mary goes to Elizabeth to pull her out of her isolation? We know that Elizabeth has retreated. We know Zechariah can't talk. We know there's a lot of change happening very quickly and very, very surprisingly. And yet, how does Elizabeth react? She's filled with the Holy Spirit when Mary shows up, and she connects with this other woman experiencing this unbelievable, life-changing event. And together, they experience joy and delight, rejoicing in each other's growing children, delighting in sharing their journeys with each other. What began as feeling like the rug had been pulled out from underneath of her turned into the greatest of blessings. Not the easiest. We know the road ahead of Elizabeth and Zechariah and John and Mary and Joseph and Jesus is not an easy road, but in this moment, Mary responds with great rejoicing and seeking greater connection. She seeks to deepen her relationship with her loved ones. She seeks to rejoice in this good news, even when she's still got to be reeling with what's coming next. We rejoice in our connection. We rejoice in bearing one another up and being together as a community, as loving one another, as holding one another, supporting one another through all of life's ups and downs. God invites us to be like Mary and Elizabeth, to seek connection, 
and to rejoice in the midst of God's extraordinary good news, even when we aren't sure just how it's all going to work out. With that, we say thanks be to God. Amen.
Today we affirm our faith together through this prayer of affirmation. We believe that joy is a sacred gift, existing out of things deeper than happiness, stemming from the truth that we belong to God. We believe that joy is not meant for isolation. Joy is meant to be shared, leading us together in laughter and in hope. And when joy feels impossibly out of reach, we believe that part of the sacred community is leading on one another. So together we say, I will share my joy when yours runs out. You will share your joy when mine runs out. And in doing so, we will both see God. Amen. You may be seated. As we prepare for the fullness of Christ's presence, let us pray for a world that yearns for new hope. God of today and God of tomorrow, we come to you this morning to thank you for the way that joy binds us together. Thank you for contagious laughter, for inside jokes, for stories around the dinner tables that make us laugh until we cry. Thank you for comedy shows, for the familiar sound of loved ones chuckle, and for the universality of smile lines. God of all our days, receive see our, our joy. Our text today reminds us that joy is better when shared. So today we thank you in particular for the Elizabeths and the Marys in our lives. Thank you for the people who spark joy in us. Thank you for the people who pull us out of our shells, who teach us how to dance and show us how to laugh. Thank you for those who declare, blessed are you. God of all our days, receive our joy. In a moment of gratitude, we silently lift their names to you now. God of all our days, receive our joy. Holy God, we know that joy is better when shared. There are days when that is easier said than done. Like Elizabeth, who stayed in isolation for months after receiving her good news, we too have a tendency to choose fear over joy. Without the help of someone at our door, we can often keep our joy to ourselves. God of all our days, we see our joy. So gracious God, when those days come, when the waters of fear rise, when isolation steals our joy, comfort us. Comfort us like a shepherd with their flock. Gather us into your arms and carry us to safer ground that we might experience joy in ways you have in store for us. God of all our days, we see our joy. There are people in our lives, Lord, that we bring to you today. For Tina Rutledge and her father on his newly diagnosed cancer. To comfort the, Ka the Kalos, the Schoenfelds, the Gebabers, and the Holland families on the death of their mom and grandma Joyce. For all who grieve during this holiday season, may they find joy through the tears. For Joan, for continued healing, for John, celebrating his last radiation treatment last week. Thank you, God. For Annie, for continued healing. And we thank you for Stephanie in our lives as she celebrates her 40th birthday this week. Continue to have her bless those who she knows and who she touches each day. God of all our days, receive our joy. And until that promised day, like Mary and Elizabeth, we will do our best to keep finding one another. Like Mary and Elizabeth, we will do our best to open the door to one another, to you, and to the joy that connection brings. 
In the name of our greatest joy, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. I invite you to share a sign of that peace with one another.
God of abundance, we bring before you the precious fruits of your creation, and with them our very lives. Teach us patience and hope as we care for all those in need, until the coming of your Son, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to please rise as you are able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give our thanks and praise. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you for the prophets, hopes, and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the Lord of the flesh. We remember the night in which he was betrayed. Our Lord Jesus took the bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples to drink saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant shed in my blood for you and all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is God. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Gathered together as one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil.
home, this is the body and blood of Christ, given and shed for you. Please rise. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. God, for whom we wait in this meal, you, have, you give us a foretaste of that day when the hungry will be fed with good things. Send us forth to make known your deeds and to proclaim the greatness of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, Lord. Amen. Family of faith, as we leave this place, we go into a weary world. So speak tenderly. Do the good that is yours to do. Choose connection and hold on to hope. Remember that Christ took on flesh for you. You are God's beloved. So go rejoicing because the world needs it. And remember that the God of peace bless you. The love of Christ sustain you and hope and the anointing of the Spirit to remain upon you now and forever. Amen. So when we talk about connection, you can't help but think about heaven. You can't help but think about if you're all by yourself and on the knees. And it makes us think of a big house. So I invite our children to come up and do these. Come on. Come on. And do these, um, what do they call it? Things again. Don't leave me up here by myself, kids. Come on.